with that. Tonight will be a very special service here. Candlelight, communion, special music, so you don't want to miss this evening's service. So that's enough of my commercial. So let's bow and ask the Lord to be our special guest. Lord, we uh, come to you this morning. We want to lift your name up and praise you. Lord, we know that you came to earth as a child to make salvation possible for the human race. Lord, for all that's done and said here, we want to give you honor and glory. We want you to be here as our special guest. Mute Pastor Tom, give him special anointing this morning. Amen. Amen. All right, our first song, 195. 195. Now, we don't sing this one very much, but it's really easy. 195. I heard the bells on Christmas Day. <laughs>
161. 161. It's the last Sunday of Advent. 161. Messiah brings the kingdom. 161. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. For unto us a child is born. To us a son is given. The government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor. Mighty God. Everlasting Father. Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom. Establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forevermore. The seal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. All right. We're going to look at some announcements here. But first, I want our pastor to come and stand right on my right side. Oh, I forgot. You forgot my good wife from your left? <laughs> come, come and stand right on my right side. That way you're in full view of this camera here. Pastor Tom is loved by all of us, and I'm sure we all say amen. 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 Pastor Tom preaches to us every Sunday. He comes up with four sermons every week. He has to start with Sunday school, then church, then Sunday evening, Wednesday evening, and he helps out when, where he can, everywhere else. He's the one that walks in this door and gets the heat and the lights and the sound system and all that done before anybody else even thinks about being here. Amen. We appreciate Pastor Tom. That's right. Amen. The church is showing, the church is giving a little token of our appreciation this morning. Yes, sir. Thank you all for everything. Right that you do for, thank you all for everything that you do for me and my family. I did put a card out there finally on the board if you can read it this morning. Uh, of thanks. And, uh, you don't want to look out there. What's all these guys doing? They're up there just <laughs> we're well, jumping the gun. We, we're jumping the gun, so okay. <laughs> At this time, God, bring Debbie up here. I don't know what I'm doing. Just show me back here. Just bring it right to your stolen camera shot here. <laughs> Come on, Deb, right up here. That's good. Thank you, guys. Deb is our custodian, paid custodian for the church, does a great job. Every Thursday, you see their truck out here, and she's here, so we want to give her a token of our appreciation as well. Thank you. so much to our service. She is, a, is, she is our organist. She adds a lot to the service when she and she's faithful. When you think about Linda, you think faithful. She, we know she prays because when she prays here, it isn't forced, it isn't anything. She prays. She's one of our warriors. So Linda, we appreciate you. And there's a token of our appreciation. Well, I think I think it's good. But whatever I do, it's only Jesus through me. Because I'm nothing, nothing, nothing without Him. Amen. But I know one thing, I'm all things with Him. Amen. And I thank you for this. Amen. 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 Last but not least this morning is Joyce. Now there's probably others we should be saying thank you and giving cards to. And I hope no one is offended if, they, if we don't call your name for teaching Sunday school or whatever you do. But because we... We appreciate everyone here. It takes, you know, not everyone can be an eye, not everyone can be an ear or a leg, we, but we all fit together as the body of Christ. Amen. So, Joyce is our pianist here. We appreciate her. She makes my job easy in those on Sunday mornings. She uh, follows when I make a mistake. She writes the ship without you folks even knowing most of the time. So she makes my job easy, makes Pastor's job a lot easier. And so, Joyce, we appreciate you this morning. Thank you. And there's a token of our appreciation. Thank you. Uh,
and I'm thankful for his son, Jesus. Yes, amen. All right, with that out of the way, we'll look here uh, tonight. I've already mentioned the service tonight, the candlelight, communion, the whole thing. We have some very special music that some of you have never heard, I promise. So just think about that. Think about that, so... All right. In fact, we have one this morning that some of you have never heard. Not the song, the singer. So we'll, we'll go to that in just a minute. Uh, Monday, have a blessed Christmas, everyone, from your church family. Just uh, blessings are yours. Tuesday, the ladies' Bible study is canceled. They're going to pick that back up on January the 2nd. Uh, Wednesday, midweek prayer service will be right here at 6 p.m. And next Sunday's New Year's Eve, all services as usual. So, looking ahead a little bit, Sunday p.m. Uh, on, let's see, Sunday, that's January 7th, will be the Soup and Sandwich uh, Fellowship. Uh, Tuesday, January 9th, is Pray for America at the New Freedom Reformed Church over here, formerly the Small Catholic Church. Uh, Saturday, January 13th, the next music jam, and Saturday, the 27th, we'll renew our breakfast again. I know some of you haven't had breakfast for all that time, so... <laughs> uh, okay. At this time, let's have the ushers come forward, please.
seemed not too long ago, but before that was about 100 years, wasn't it? <laughs> Welcome to our service this morning. Amberly. I knew her when she was about that tall. Still is. Still is. <laughs> oh, that, Gary, you're going to pay for that. <laughs> well, I, I appreciate both of you being here, and appreciate everyone that comes here this morning. So, at this time, we'll look at some prayer requests. Unspoken requests by uplifted hand. Many, many unspoken requests. We heard from the penance this week, and the new baby is named Katrina. Katarina. Katarina, okay. I I, I, <coughs> looks like Katrina to me. Katarina, and uh, she was uh, born very early this morning, so uh, we praise the Lord. And the, now they can start uh, working on the tumor that's in on the side of Katie's uh, head there. And uh, some of that may go away by itself because of the estrogen content and everything that can create that. So they're hoping that that's got, that got a good outcome there. And, you know, they can hope all they want. We can pray. Yeah. And we have right. confidence in our God. Amen. So Amen. let's pray for uh, Katie. And, uh, you know, that's uh, Mark and Terry. Are, this has been, they are right beside themselves <clears throat> through all this. So let's remember uh, them that they will have peace over this. Uh, the ladies' Bible study has a friend, Marty. Used to be Marty Gould, now is uh, Meyer. Meyer. And uh, her husband, LJ, has had pulmonary pneumonia and, and some other things there, and some uh, lots of stuff going wrong right there. He's in the hospital. So let, let's remember LJ this morning. Let's He's also on a, a di dialysis drip. Okay. Let's remember LJ this morning. <laughs> Amy got good news this week that, yeah. that things are going to work out, uh, and that's we, we've been praying for that. So let's give the Lord praise this morning for that. Yeah. Praise Amen. the Lord. For that. Yeah. Amen. Uh, Eldon got some news that he didn't want to hear this week. So let's remember Eldon as he goes in for uh, more tests and uh, gets a plan of treatment. But let's pray for Eldon. There will be many travelers this week. I said included, so. <laughs> yeah, if our car can hold the weight. So. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, Debbie Russell's cousin Guy uh, has tumors around his, what, through his body, I guess. And uh, he needs our prayers. He lives right up, I believe, in Flint. So let's remember... Uh, Guy. It's not our guy back here, it's yeah. Guy. <laughs> Anyone else need to be on my list this morning? All uh, right, Carolyn? I would like prayer for Ethan's grandma. Ethan's grandma. Her name is Betty Donaldson, and she's in a Claren Hospital with a broken back. Oh. oh. So, <coughs> and in a lot of pain, so we need prayer. Traveling to okay. next Jim week. Okay, will be traveling. That's we'll keep that on travelers. Bonnie yeah. Selby called me, the pastor's aunt, um, and she's back on her um, chemo treatment. The pill didn't work out so well for her, and she's very weak and um, confusion, and just needs some uplift. Okay, that's Bonnie Selby for those of you that are on the, on the internet here. Uh, that'd be a pastor's aunt, and uh, she's back on chemo, uh, very weak, uh, somewhat confused. So let's re let's remember Bonnie. Amen. Yes. Um, my daughter Carol uh, had the flu, and she's getting a little bit better, but her husband's got it now, and he's. He's not doing as good, but he's doing a little better. 
Okay, is that our Carol? Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's too bad to hear. Well, we hope Carol, she usually watches. We hope she's getting feeling yes. better, and we hope her husband gets... She'll know it when she calls me. Okay. <laughs> so, oh, that flu going around is not nice. Anyone else? All right, our prayer song, you, you might say we've done this several times, Dan, and I'll say, yeah, it's this time of year. Number 165, Emmanuel, 165. <laughs> Congregation today, 
we're, I, I, I as a pastor am, am so thankful for for you guiding me 11 years ago to this church and where we can serve the Lord together here and the, the people uh, fully on board and wanting to serve and the little sign that was made uh, Lord here Faith Church we're all in and we pray Lord that especially in these times with all that's going on in our world we pray that we would be all in with everything and, and our calling Lord that you've given us each one responsibilities to minister to uh, every place that we are no matter where we are if it's in the store or at work or just out and about or in our own homes Lord the phone calls that we can make the cards that we can send there are so many ways that we can share Jesus Christ and, and what he's done to change our life and what he's done to share that. Lord, there are so many places. The fields are ripe with harvest, Lord. So we pray for this group here and all the needs that we have in our own families and our extended families and then those that we know around the world in many areas. We just pray, Lord, for the neighboring churches that are have joined our our, uh, pray for America on Tuesdays. And Lord, we pray that uh, for those churches, pray for their leadership, for encouragement, and each one that serves the Lord this morning. We just give you praise for all that you're going to do today. And Lord, I know that with you, we haven't missed anybody in prayer because you cover all of those things. And Lord, we just pray a, a great thank you, Lord, and praise for what what you have done for us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. We have a special uh, song this morning. Darcy's daughter over there, uh, Amberly, is going to come and see if these microphones do well. Let's see. I'll turn this one on. Right. I can... <laughs>
there in the asphalt out there or in some of the cracks in the, in the, in the sidewalks and things or in some really hard areas, there is a little plant, whether it be a weed or a flower. Now, I don't think that you're going to see, as this story would portray, I don't think you're ever going to see out of one of those cracks in that hard soil coming a rose out of there. Have you ever seen anything like that? I know that when you drive through the mountains, sometimes out of a crack you'll see a, the roots of a tree coming out on a funny angle and it'll be growing up. You're like, how in the world did that thing take hold right there? Now, jumping to something, hold that in your mind. As, one, as we travel across America, and I don't know, I think this probably happens in other areas too, but we have in this country what we would consider the continental divide. And so here's the thing. If you go over on the other side of that hill, now just imagine America being a hill like this, and it tops off right there, dividing the country, the, the watershed of when it rains and the creeks and everything run towards, on the other side of it, they all eventually work their way to the western coast. And everything on this side of the hill naturally uh, would come to the eastern coast, the Atlantic Ocean, or the Gulf side. And if you consider it, a drop of rain on the western side flows. Just a, you, you think, all right, just one raindrop eventually piled up with all the other raindrops will work its way over here. A great dividing point. Do you realize that the birth of Jesus Christ is the watershed of human history. It divides the events of the past and the future. It was the great pivotal event of history. When Jesus began his public mis uh, ministry, word drifted back to his hometown about his teachings and miracles, as, as uh, always does. Uh, when, when you do something, it doesn't take very long anymore. We have... We have texting and we have all these um, things on the internet there and on your phones. It doesn't take long and, and all of a sudden you're, you're reading it and like, well, these guys know more about me than I do. Hmm. Somehow it gets around pretty fast, doesn't it? And uh, I, I ordered something last week there and, it, you know, they, they keep updating you every few hours like that and you get on there and find out well, where's my package well it's in Ohio and then it comes and then you can see where it's going the word got around back then too when he, he began his ministry and I think that if there had been a newspaper uh, or a na in Nazareth it might have run the headline local boy makes good <laughs> he was growing in fame and renown but when Jesus preached in Nazareth, his townspeople actually rejected him and his claims. They could, know, they could not accept the Messiah. You know, part of the reason was, is that he was from there, and his father, Joseph, was a carpenter in that area. And as, as Jesus grew up, he kind of followed in his father's footsteps. And so the people that didn't accept, they were like, what? What, you know, they would say, how, where did, when they listened to the message that he had, they're, they're kind of wondering, where did, where did he come up with all this stuff? How did he learn that? How, and and I, I kind of realized that. I actually had my dad ask me that question one time. Because my dad went to college for four or five years, and I didn't. And I, I was happy to tell my dad, he said, where did you learn all that stuff that you're preaching. And I said, well, you know, back when, when I was a kid and you didn't think I was listening, apparently I was. <laughs> but I can tell you this, it wasn't of me. I know that the Holy Spirit applied that, brought things back, reminded me of things that he'd said over the years. And Jesus was of a different kind, wasn't he? And uh, a, pro a prophet is not without honor, except in his own country, Mark 6, 4. Mark records the reaction of Jesus' uh, hometown in the words, many who heard him were astonished, saying, where did this man get all this? What is the wisdom given to him? What mighty works are wrought by his hands? You know, the, the people that he 
brought miracles to and healed and kind of bewildered, they ask, isn't this the same little guy that's been running around with his brothers and sisters right here in our town? Isn't this uh, Mary's child down the street? And uh, his dad is there. Yeah, they, so they were, in other words, they sought to account for him in human relationships, in human terms. And I think that contributed a little bit to, to wondering, could this really be the Messiah? Besides the fact that we have been always taught that the people were looking for uh, a king with lots of power, and this Messiah was going to come and just take over the everything, you know. And here, here is uh, Jesus born in a, in a barn, in a manger, we say. Uh, and they thought, this, this has got to be something just made up. This can't be real. And yet, it was. Our text for this Christmas Sunday says, For he grew up before him like a root out of dry ground. Dry ground suggests a hard soil, arid, uh, a most unlikely place for a plant to grow and flourish. You wouldn't think it would do that well. It suggests unexpectedness. Jesus came not full grown as expected, but as a tiny baby. And he was born not in a palace or a mansion, but in a, in a manger, in a barn. Miraculousness is what we see. He was born of a virgin mother. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Un, un, unaccountableness. A gardener prepares the soil for planting and then keeps the ground moist and soft. If a plant grows on a dry ground or in the crevice of a mountain, it usually is shriveled and stunted or uh, crooked in some way. But here is Jesus. He grew as a root out of dry ground, but he was no frail weakling. He was the fairest of 10,000. He was the cedar of Lebanon in strength. He was the lily of the valley in purity and fragrance. He was the rose of Sharon. All those words and phrases are, are, are great, aren't they? And we remember those. In the glory and beauty, he was the best, the noblest, the highest, and the holiest of humankind. That's who Jesus was, and look where he started. We need to look at the soil from which Jesus grew. You could no more count for him from that soil than you could count for a vigorous growth of a flower in a park in our parking lot out here. Now I know that uh, Dan has and a couple of us have, <laughs> out there have have sprayed the weeds in the parking lot once or twice a summer and trimmed things, and they've never seen a rose like that no. growing in a place like that. No one has ever seen anyone like Jesus was and how he turned out. Now look, nothing in his family could account for Jesus. You know, hereditary things are uh, is a real factor in our lives. We sometimes make too much of it, but it is part of our makeup. We not only inherit physical uh, and facial characteristics, but also mental gifts and personal charm. Have you noticed my personal charm? Yes. <laughs> I don't even know if I have any. <laughs> I'll tell you, there are some areas where the doctors will ask us, did your, did your dad or your mother's side of the family have any of these diseases? And, and so you actually might go follow the same trail uh, down there. Well, uh, we not only inherit physical characteristics but personal a study of Christ's ancestry does nothing to explain him he was a descendant of King David but so were multitudes of others and God saw that he grew up in a good family but no other child in the family compared with Jesus some of the things that that he was able to do and knew you just knew those people knew so what, where did he get this from? Where did this come from? How is he able, you remember, didn't he go into the temple at the age of 12? Yes. 
and was saying things to those in leadership in there that they, they're like, what? You know, they couldn't believe it either. He was quite advanced in that area. Nothing in his environment could account for Jesus. Next to heredity, our environment contributes most of what we are. Uh, where we have been in our life, the atmosphere in which we live, the company we keep, all of those <coughs> have an influence on us. Jesus grew up in an ordinary village. His trade was that of a peasant carpenter. He didn't even, he had one of those folding tapes. <laughs> yeah. He didn't have the one that goes back in and just about cuts your thumb off on the way back in. <laughs> You know, the ones with the notch in them, where they've got a crack in it, and you let it in, and it goes right by your thumb, and the next thing you know, you've sawed it half off. <laughs> there was nothing in his upbringing that would explain him. So far as his environment was concerned, he was a root out of dry ground. Nothing in the time in which he lived could account for Jesus either. There have been many times in history when several geniuses in literature or music or government lived at the same time but never was there a genius like Jesus right. hmm. the time in which Jesus lived was a barren time in fact the, uh, for 400 years there had been no prophetic voice formal religion was filled with legalism and hypocrisy as far as fresh religious thoughts and revelation were concerned he was a root out of dry ground. Mm -hmm. It was a time for almost 400 years where just nothing was going. You could just say, well, there's not much going on, even in religion. The fourth thing, nothing in his race or nationality could account for Jesus. He was a Jew. The Jews had a genius for religion. They excelled in law, wisdom, poetry, and prophecy. They produced men like Abraham, Moses, David, Solomon, Elijah, Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Paul, and a lot of others. But there was not another quite like Jesus. As far as his nation was concerned, he was a root of dry ground. However, there was nothing exclusive, exclusively Jewish about Jesus either. It is true that he loved his country, Back Jerusalem and the temple, but there was nothing sectional or parochial about him. He belonged to the human race. Mm -hmm. The human race was produced, has produced many great people. But in wisdom and truth and holiness, Jesus excelled them all. That's right. Others guessed at truth, to be honest with you. He was he 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 was the truth. Amen. Amen. That's right. They guessed. He was the truth. He was the greatest teacher who ever lived. For 2,000 years, he, was in, he has inspired millions to live and even die for him. I need to stop right there and say, think about this. Has anyone else in the world ever affected that many people and continues to do so 2,000 years after he passed and went into heaven? Well... Amen. Not even close. We're here today because we believe in Jesus. That's, that, we have to think about that. How many people has he influenced over the years? All those that came over to America, came here looking for, for peaceful ways to worship, and all around the world in missions, millions, millions of people he affected. Uh, all because he was different than all the others, and because he was a root out of dry ground. We, we look at the human race, stained, defiant, corrupt. Then we look at Jesus. Here he is, sinful, sinless, obedient, and pure. We ask if so fresh a sweet stream could flow from such a bitter fountain. If the human race could produce one Jesus, why could it not produce more? Human nature cannot explain Jesus. He was a root out of dry ground. Amen. Mm -hmm. The Christmas story is the most logical account for Jesus. If you want to know why, where, and who was he, the Christmas story Amen. is it. 
We sang a song this morning, Tell Me the Story of Jesus. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor. So that by his poverty you might become rich. 2 Corinthians 8, 9. His, his was not a mere human birth. The word became flesh in a miraculous incarnation. <coughs> Jesus became flesh Amen. in a miraculous incarnation. Right. Jesus was not simply the son of Mary. He was the son of God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It was a glorious day when God created man. It was an even greater day when God became man. It was a wonderful day when God made man in his image. It was an even more wonderful day when God made himself in man's image. This is the miracle of Christmas. What are we supposed to do about it? We're supposed to worship him, but most of all, let us tell it to the world. We're supposed to share it with the world through the way we live as Christians. Our example shows what Jesus was like. And we know that he was way far superior to anybody else. I'll tell you what. When you can pray, when we as a group can pray, when we make a list, we make a little list in our Sunday school class and we pray. Now I bring it over here and we make, add to that list here. And we pray and we get action. Amen. That's right. When we pray. Amen. When we have faith to believe that God can do those things and bring miracles of healing, bring miracles and change people's lives, and we see it happen, how can we, how can we turn away from yes. that? Why would we? We've got to continue to realize that God answers prayers and realize the miracles that he brings. Yes. Amen. We had one of our ladies in our class about three weeks ago, I think it was. She started, she had lost her job. Rhonda, and, and, and this is just one example. She said, I, I really need you guys to praise because pray, because I don't I'm, I got enough money to make it about one more month and that's it in my savings. And she needed a job. She prayed and got a job. Amen. We pray. She Amen. got a job, and guess what? She'll tell you ask her, uh, when you see her, probably be here tonight. Uh, Ask her, how's the job going? Yeah. And she'll tell you, it's way beyond what I asked yes, for. It it's way better than that. It is. And so, isn't that just like God? Yes. To yes. give us more? You know, sometimes we think, well, he gave me something. I asked for this. He gave me something else. I'm not sure that that's what I asked for. Want that. I'm not sure I want that. And then down the road, we realize, oh, man. He knew what I needed more than I knew what I needed. Yeah, right. He answered my prayer. Amen. Praise God for answering prayer. I don't know uh, about you, but I know that that uh, when when this church prays with faith that we have, things get done. Amen. Uh, I was able to share with somebody uh, this past week about our church during COVID. You know, sometimes we'll we'll say, yeah, but our our attendance fell way off and. We were down to half, and yeah, it's pretty much agreed with across the board. But then I say, yeah, but you know what? We had a we had a, a thing going on where we were bringing in funding for adding on to the church, building a new church, and even through that time, right there, God blessed us way past our goal. Yeah. You know, and that's a miracle in itself. He has sent people here to our church that have become our best friends. And we love you all. Amen. And when you come through the doors, if you're looking for a church that is an old-fashioned believer in Jesus Christ and the Bible, you <coughs> preach right straight out of God's Word, the truth, and we will not be bent by Satan That's into right. anything else. Amen. We'll continue to do that no matter how difficult it is. This is it. Amen. So come and be part of it and make friends here. Be our friends. We'll be your friends. We're going to we're we're going to heaven. Amen. That's right. Here. 
and we want to look around over near the eastern gate is where we're going to be at. We'll meet you there. If you come in another gate, we'll find you. But isn't it wonderful? Hope. The world has no hope. We have hope here. Amen. Jesus Christ loves you all. Let's stand together. Father, I pray this morning that uh, this will be one of the greatest Christmases that we all have. Lord, we know there are many sad and sorrowful things going on in the world today and even in our own lives, but we sure are not alone. We have you right by our side at all times. We have our friends here and fellowship here that we worship with. This is the church, and Lord, we just want to say this morning thank you for for the Christmas and your plan of salvation that was born through Jesus Christ as you began here and as our Savior. And Lord, we look forward to the days ahead. We pray for each one here in this room that they will be blessed with everything that they, uh, Lord, that you would see to it that we need. Lord, we just ask that you would watch over us. Keep us safe as we travel today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 <clears throat>